Grab your jar of artisanal pickles and climb in the hot tub, because this week we're talking episode 4 of Fiona and Cake, Prismo the Wishmaster. The Prismo we see in this episode has definitely changed a lot since the last time we saw him. And when a mysterious stranger threatens Fiona, Cake, Simon, and Prismo's job as Wishmaster, our favorite two-dimensional cosmic entity has to impart the wisdom of, and the ability to travel, the multiverse. This isn't the first time we've seen Prismo explain exactly how the Adventure Time multiverse works, so today I'm breaking down all the references, callbacks, easter eggs, and details you might have missed. You're watching Whitney Vision, and this is our breakdown of Prismo the Wishmaster. This is your spoiler warning! If you haven't seen episode 4 of Fiona and Cake yet, hit pause on this video with your time remote. As you probably know, Voice artist Sean Rohani has taken over the role from Kamel Nanjiani due to a miscommunication with his management, and so far, this dude is crushing it. The episode opens on the Drift, a large space station first seen in Distant Lands Bimo. If you recall, it turned out that their leader, Hugo, along with Mr. M, had tricked them into destroying their already decaying station in order to build him an escape pod. After BMO and Y5 foil Hugo's plan, the Drift's residents take it upon themselves to consolidate their resources and begin rebuilding their dying home. The close-ups of the pods we see here were also previously seen in distant lands, although you can tell that time has passed due to the palm tree's growth in the island pod. The unlit orbs we see here have likely been decommissioned to save energy and resources, especially because so many of their healthy pods were needlessly destroyed by Hugo's greed. The marketplace we saw in BMO has also had a glow up since the last time we saw it. Likewise, this city block got a facelift, with Sammy's tea house replacing the Hugo building that once stood in its place. To the left of the door, you'll spot a Hugo mat vending machine covered in growth, signifying that Hugo's dumb machines haven't been used around these parts in a long time. Considering that the events of BMO end with BMO meeting a young Jake and Finn, I'm guessing it's been roughly 22 ish years since Hugo left. Inside Sammy's, a mummy-like figure sits sipping his tea in a way that reminds me a lot of the butterflies from Peacemaker. Sammy says goodbye to a patron called Normulon before he starts to close up for the night, a nod to the characters Sam and Norm from Simon and Fiona's favorite sitcom, Cheers. But surprise, it's the Scarlet Scarab, the jerk god auditor. But he wasn't the only one in disguise. Sammy turns out to be a fire being named Cairo Siphon, who eventually deserted the secret flames for a more relaxed way of life. A Cairo Siphon is a portable flamethrower used by the ancient Greeks as an incendiary weapon. By shooting Greek fire, a combustible compound ignited by contact with water and capable of burning while floating on water, it made for a formidable weapon. Keeping with the Mediterranean influence, I believe we can extrapolate that the sacred flame that Kiro Siphon deserted is likely based on the sacred fire of Vesta. While many cultures have eternal flames of spiritual importance that are intended to be kept ablaze forever, the Roman sacred fire of Vesta was tended to by hand-picked guardians. Forced to take a vow of chastity for 30 years and never cut their hair, the Vestal Virgins were charged with keeping a flame symbolic of the Roman Empire's reign burning. While the Vestals enjoyed elite status, if they failed in their duties, they would be buried alive. So here with Kyra Siphon, I imagine that he was conscripted into tending to this sacred flame, despite his desires to run a tea house. This role break is similar to Fiona's desire to leave her boring life behind and pursue adventures. The Scarab, on the other hand, is symbolic of heedless order, as it's his duty to police those that step out of line. Note his tie, he's a total stiff. While scarabs, aka dung beetles, are traditionally Egyptian symbols of life, death, transformation, and rebirth, this scarab seems to be an interesting twist on the dung beetle. His job is to ball up the metaphorical refuse of society. So the scarab catches Cairo Siphon in an egg that reduces him to a teeny tiny little Tamagotchi version of his former self, and adds him to his nearly full crystal egg carton prison. In addition to the neutralized fire being, his digital bounty board also contains a slew of rule breakers, like Voidcaster, Cage Dude, Finn's dad Martin Mertens, Oscillator, Bug and Burp Ball, Canaria, and Prismo. This actually isn't the first time that Voidcaster shows up. His first appearance was back in Season 6's Escape from the Citadel, where it's revealed that he has the ability to open portals to other universes within the Adventure Time multiverse. Martin is wanted for desertion, much like Kyra Siphon. And this tracks with his behavior in the series. He's always fleeing something, be it the Crystal Citadel, the islands, alien planets, or meaningful conversations with his son. 
when Prismo's picture pops up on screen, Scarab says finally, like he's been waiting for the Wishmaster to make a mistake just like this one. We later learn that this is actually because he wants to steal Prismo's sick ass time room and become the new cosmic deity in charge of managing the multiverse. And it honestly seems like he's seeking revenge because he never got invited to Prismo's cool parties. Note that all the other bounties have side profiles in the Scarab's database. But since Prismo is two dimensional, his side profile is non existent. Inside the time room, Prismo is floating miserably in the hot tub surrounded by Aussie beer, IPA soups, and an empty TV dinner tray. As we saw last episode, Homie's also grown a scraggly depression beard, and it's clear that he's struggling to function. Based on the way Prismo was fondly watching old reruns of his best buddy Jake's adventures in the last episode, we can tell that he's taking Jake's death really hard. That hot tub is actually where Prismo and Jake chilled together in their very first episode appearance in season 5's Finn the Human, so it makes sense that he's wallowing in a place that makes him feel close to his pal. He's still neglecting his responsibilities, evident by the fact that two purple buttons are now incessantly blaring like the world's most annoying snooze alarm instead of just one now, and he's definitely way too distracted to listen intently to Wyatt. Which is kind of disturbing considering that whatever Tree Trunks' ex did to get here involved a lot of blood. Maybe that's why he was stuck in Dead World 1 with the worst of the worst in Distant Lands together again. When Wyatt accidentally wishes that it was quiet enough for him to think due to Prismo's remote alarm, Prismo grants him one of his signature monkey's paw wishes, trapping him in a black and white silent film universe. According to tweets from Steve Wolfhard, this scene was inspired by silent cartoons, like 1922's Little Red Riding Hood by Walter Lanz and Charlie Chaplin's 1919 short Charlie on the Farm. He even posted some of the exact images they drew from in this sequence. This alt-reality features Tree Trunks as a bank robber, PB and her banana guards as the good guys, and Peppermint Butler and Shoes Goose as the unsuspected heroes. When the train boops Wyatt and makes him fart, you can also see both Shelby and the Lich standing behind Princess Bubblegum as she laughs. In the Season 7 episode crossover, Jake accidentally tosses the Lich's hand into the multiverse's cosmic web, which copy-pasted a version of it in every single reality. As most Adventure Time fans know, the Lich is kind of an inevitable evil. Although Finn wished the Lich never existed in Prismo's time room, his deadly presence still found its way to Farmworld after Icefin went bonkers and donked up the place with the Wish Crown. He even shows up unprompted in this brand new universe, proving that it's always only a matter of time before he tries his life-ending bullshit again in a new dimension. After Wyatt cusses him out, Prismo finally decides to address the alarm, and is urgently notified of a crossover event as soon as he clicks the flashing purple buttons at the top of his time remote. There's two buttons now that Fiona has portaled to Ooh, representing the second anomaly in their reality. As he tries to figure out where the crossover is happening, we see several familiar faces and scenarios as he flips through the channels. First up is Huntress Wizard, followed by Princess Bubblegum and Mr. Cupcake cutting the ribbon at their new candy orphanage. Although the outside of the orphanage was never shown on screen in AT, we did learn about Peebles getting involved with the candy orphanage back in Season 4's Princess Cookie. Next, we see Peppermint Butler and Blaine from Wizard City on a cute little milkshake date. If you recall, Blaine is non-binary, so I'm stoked to see another queer relationship blossoming anew. Susan Strong and Frida are also apparently still adventuring together. But Prismo's brain blows when he sees Fiona, Cake, and Astrid in the marketplace moments after Fiona rescued Cake. Picking up where we left off in episode 3, Prismo beams F and C up to his time room and shuts the whole cube down to prevent anyone else from finding out about their arrival. Upon meeting these two in the flesh, Prismo gives them some upgrades, like Cake's permanent voice and stretchy powers, and Fiona's classic outfit from her OG AT episodes. It turns out that he's not just able to do this because he's the Wishmaster. He's actually also the ghostwriter behind the Fiona and Cake series that the Ice King allegedly wrote. When Galb partially digested Simon, Betty, and Finn, it reset all of them, and the Ice Crown to their most basic forms, which restored Simon's sanity. It also unfortunately cut off the connection between Prismo's fanfic stories and Simon's brain, and he's no longer able to use the Ice King's mind hole like a human hard drive. To help him make sense of why Fiona and Cake are hopping universes, he beams Simon up to the time room from the shower, and he arrives butt naked. I love the detail that Simon still faces the faucet when he's showering with his hands pressed against the wall, just like what we saw the Ice King do back in Season 5's The Party's Over Isla de Senorita. With his blue Ice King Moo Moo on, Simon tries to deny that he had anything to do with their arrival anew. But Prismo knows that crossovers don't just happen, and finds out that there was an attempt to summon Gal Betty, 
Simon protests that he did it because Prisma wouldn't bring his beloved back from the Chaos Deity's clutches. Calling back to the brief clip we saw at the end of Come Along With Me that showed Simon wishing for Betty's safe return. Sadly, like he told Kingman when he tried to wish his own wife, Margles, back from the Maw of Galb, Prismo says he just can't do it. When Cake tests out the time remote for the first time, she flips to a channel featuring Lemon Grab trying to force his camel to drink water. After Justin Roiland turned out to be a piece of shit, Drinks Monsoon took over the role of Lemon Grab. While I think that the new Prismo Rohani is a little bit more accurate of a sound alike, Monsoon ain't half bad. As Prismo explains that each wish he fulfills creates its own new wish-altered reality, he mentions several worlds that were created or forever changed as a result of someone's wish. Like the farm world universe that created itself after Finn wished the Lich out of existence, Funny Shape universe, the Grotto universe which was first seen back in Season 8's Beyond the Grotto, and most interestingly the Flapjack universe. It's long been suspected by Adventure Time fans that the marvelous misadventures of Flapjack shares a multiverse with Adventure Time, primarily because of how many cast and crew members got their start on Flapjack before being hired at AT. We've got Ghost Shrimp, the storyboard artist on Flapjack who later became the lead background artist for AT, Cole Sanchez, a writer, storyboard artist, and storyboard revisionist for Flapjack turned storyboard artist, creative director, supervising director, and voice actor on Adventure Time. Then we've got Patrick McHale, who was also a writer and storyboard artist for Flapjack who eventually landed the role of creative director of Adventure Time. This particular scene from Flapjack comes from episode 19, My Guardian Angel, which was storyboarded by Pendleton Ward, creator of Adventure Time, and co-written by him and Alex Hirsch. It really broke my heart, however, when Prismo stopped on a video of Finn and Jake and remarked, this universe is my favorite because it had my favorite guy. The Wishmaster has either seen or created every corner of the multiverse and no other universe compared to Ooh because none of them contained the exact version of Jake that we all know and love. I know for a fact that even if I had reality hopping abilities, the cosmic realm where Pugsley's my best friend would always be my favorite. Although let's be real, I'd probably also go full Doctor Strange and just love every version of Puggy in every universe. Oh, and just real quick, peep Finn's sword in the clip that they watch. That's the Night Sword, baby! Which means that this particular adventure took place sometime after the events of season 10's Marcy and Hudson, when Peppermint Butler calls upon Marceline's dad to infuse the new sword he forged for Finn with cursed Nidosphere magic. Recently, showrunner Adam Mudo gave a talk at Savannah College of Art and Design, and Twitter user Craze the Days caught some deleted scenes he shared with the students. Among those was a live-action reenactment of a scene from Season 3's Dad's Dungeon. Currently, there isn't any context to this scene, but seeing as it was supposedly part of Fiona and Cake, I'm gonna guess that this was intended to be part of this or another multiversal TV flippin' scene. Another deleted scene from this episode is an extended version of Prismo creating Fiona and Cake, using a sort of video game interface. All the way back in Season 5's Jake the Dog, Prismo revealed that every single wish irrevocably alters the course of space-time when he told Jake, Wishing an event to be changes elements before and after it. Memories will be destroyed, babies will not be born. Potential worlds could be evaporated by your wish. Which is why it's so surprising to me that Prismo created Fiona and Cake despite knowing the full ramifications of the consequences. He knew from the start that crafting a new reality would destroy memories, alter events, and even erase whole entire people. But here's where the metaphor comes in. I think that the writers of this episode are trying to convey the magnetic desire artists have to create, the presumed selfishness that comes from making something special that's all your own. Many artists, writers, performers, etc., including myself, spend a lot of time making art for companies or other outside parties, and it just hits different when you create something because you want to create it. Prismo grew weary of only making new realities for the people he granted wishes for, and it seems like his boss really sucks. Fiona and Cake became an artistic outlet for him when he felt stifled by the limitations of his job, and helped him find meaning and purpose in the stories that he helped begin for so many others. The first shot we see on his laptop of his early FNC designs is a still from the OG Fiona and Cake intro, and he also shows them his gender-swapped versions of their friends. Flame Prince, Prince Gumball, Butterscotch Butler, and Marshall Lee the Vampire King. He even shows us a clip where Fiona is holding the Wish Star Sword from the comics, and Season 6 is The Prince Who Wanted Everything. Prismo explains that because their universe was hidden deep inside the Ice King's cursed magical brain, it was significantly affected when Galb's digestive system reset Simon's wish crown. Their once magical corner of the multiverse was drained of its magic when Simon's mind was healed, and Prismo was instantly locked out of his brain for good. 
Although I definitely agree that this is because Simon and Betty were broken down and returned to their most basic original forms, I also think that there's a deeper reason why Prismo can't continue his Fiona and Cake fanfic in Simon's noggin. What if this lockout is additionally happening because of Betty's wish to keep Simon safe at all costs? In her last moments of being herself, Betty wished to protect Simon however it had to happen. So yes, Prismo is definitely locked out because of the magic drain, no argument there. But I also think he might be locked out because Gall Betty and all her new infinite cosmic power won't allow anyone to mess with Simon again. Unfortunately, Scarlet Scarab shows up to confront Prismo for his crimes. And it's clear that this dude has always been a narc, because if he wasn't, he might have been invited to more of Prismo's parties. To escape Scrabby the Jerk God Auditor, Prismo leads Fiona, Cake, and Simon through the inner workings of the Time Cube, which were first shown in Season 6's Is That You? Check out this time basement design that Steve Wolfhard posted on Twitter. It's pretty sick. Also, sorry, but I'm not calling that website X. You can't make me. What I find hilarious is that Prismo sees the value of giving Fiona shorts instead of a skirt for easier, breezier adventuring, but he does not offer to give Simon a pair of underoos. Just letting that guy go full bush out, tush out in the time basement. Fascinatingly, we also get a glimpse of the time core, where a gigantic sundial and hourglass are interlocked in a forever routine of smacking each other with mallets. Wolfhard also tweeted some early designs of the Time Core Titans, who sent time waves across the multiverse that our heroes experience as the passage of time. My reading of these designs is that the two Titans are symbolic of different perceptions of time. The sundial represents the unending cyclical nature of time, while the hourglass represents the fleeting mortal perception of time. Both strike each other rhythmically like gongs, which are occasionally used as time signals, much like church bells. Poet Carl Sandburg once wrote, the gong of time rang for you to come out of the hush and you were born. The gong of time will ring for you to go back to the same hush you came from. Essentially, the time core is an unending metronome, and our lives are bookended by these gong strikes. When Prismo mentions that his boss will drop the hammer if he finds out about any of this, Fiona tries to inquire about his employer, but he just dodges the question like he does back in the Season 7 episode Crossover. Crossover also introduced us to the multiverse web that Prismo shows Fiona, Cake, and Simon, and that shit is just as intricately connected as a camp counselor relationship chart. A third Prismo copy recreates the same experiment that Simon previously attempted to separate Betty and Galb in order to send everyone back to their original universe. If you recall Season and Six's Wake Up, it turned out that Prismo was actually the projected dream of an old man. When Jake resurrected Prismo in Is That You, one of Jake's variants took the place of the sleeping old man, while another copy of Jake got to live on with Finn anew. The Jake old man is still sleeping in the same spot where we last saw him, and Prismo wants to use his body as the battery that will power the ritual. As Fiona and Cake run back into the room, they both shout Finn and Jake's famous catchphrase, ADVENTURE TIME, before they realize that they just traveled in a big circle. Over in Prismo's artisanal pickle room, Prismo is attempting to distract the scarab with his signature hot and spicies. If you recall, Prismo's pickles have some magical properties that lead to very bizarre dreams, and it was through his last remaining pickle that Jake was able to resurrect him. Scrabby reveals that he believes that he should have been hired as Wishmaster, and that he wants to take the time room from Prismo. He threatens to egg Simon, Fiona, and Cake, and toss them into the incinerator with the rest of his Digimon collection. Fiona begs a numb, apathetic, defeated Simon to help save her world so that everyone they know won't die. Of course, Simon agrees, because how could he not? He also had to watch as the world he knew exploded, died, and changed after the Mushroom War. He lost the love of his life, his fiancée Betty, and more than that, he lost his own mind. Simon decides to help her because he knows firsthand what it's like to lose everything and everyone you've ever known. Luckily, Fiona Cake and Simon are able to escape the Scarlet Scarab by using Prismo's time remote to portal them to Farmworld, where we immediately spot an Ice King-esque scarecrow in the cornfield. Cake shapes herself like a flying saucer and starts making crop circles in the field, a reference to the theory popularized in the 80s that aliens were responsible for the appearance of crop circles on farms. Simon vows to become the Ice King again, but honestly, I'm more worried about Prismo's fate at the moment. And I think that the end credits image might confirm that he got egged by the scarab. The end title card features a picture of the time room deconstructed, alongside a small cube with the letter P on it. First of all, the pieces of the time room look very similar to Galb's Tetris pieces when they're laid out this way. And second of all, I think that the P block represents Prismo in egg form. 
The other dream sequence and title cards have all been a loose tie-in to the real-life events experienced by the characters, and this is no exception. Last week, the end credits showed a pickup truck full of apples with a missing wheel, meant to be the Dreamland version of the squirrel's apple cart in Cake the Cat. Here, I think we're seeing the dreamified version of Prismo being trapped Tamagotchi-style in Scrab's crystal egg carton. Those are all the Easter eggs and details that I could find in Prismo the Wishmaster, but I want to know what I missed in the comments. Like and subscribe to Whitney Vision, follow us on all our socials, and stay tuned for our next breakdown of Episode 5, Destiny. I'm Scarlet Witt, and you're watching Whitney Vision.